Good afternoon, it's Linda from Linda's Paperworks. And today I wanted to talk about what are the basic tools you need to get started in making junk journals. There are a lot of things out there that you could spend money on, but just the basic tools that you need are pretty simple and probably most of them are things that you already have. Um, we'll start with scissors. These scissors are an extra pair of, uh, they were fabric scissors that they just kind of became my paper scissors because I have new fabric scissors that I don't cut paper with. So having both kinds of uh, scissors for paper and for fabric is good. You, it doesn't hurt to cut uh, fabric with paper scissors, but you can ruin your fabric scissors by cutting paper with them. It dulls them down. At least that's what I've heard. I don't have personal experience with that because I was taught, do not do this. These little scissors are, um, I forget what this is called, but they have a spring in them. They are more ergonomical because they, um, you, you do a squeeze motion rather than a pull motion like you do with regular scissors. These you pull, and this is harder on your hands. And also, these are smaller scissors. I use these a lot when I'm fussy cutting things, cutting around a bird or a flower or something like that. So this, I got these on the clearance aisle at Walmart. I find a lot of my stuff <laughs> on the clearance aisle, and I'm always grateful when I find something like this. I think I paid $3 for this pair of scissors, and they're, they're generally more like 6 or $7 a pair. And then this little pair of scissors are some that have been in the family as long as I can remember. They were my mother's, and they're still pretty good little paper scissors. They got glue on them right now. But um, I keep these handy, too, just to have an extra pair of scissors around to cut with. So that is scissors. Let's put these aside. Then also, um, I'm gonna include, these are, this is a nice to have, is pinking shears. And I, these are my fabric pinking shears, so I only use these on fabric. But um, it's nice to be able to cut like the edge of fabric and so you have a, a little pinked design on it and it kind of keeps it from raveling. But you can also get, these are just kid scissors, little pinking shear. Uh, it's it's actually more of a wavy line, but um, these are good for cutting paper with. And they come, these kinds of scissors, that, these are Fiskars, and they have a scallop design on them. And I have a couple of other pairs that I got at an estate sale. This has a um, kind of a, I don't know, a lace kind of edge. I, let's see, what does it say it is? A ripple is what it says it is. And um, I got these for, I think, a dollar a pair. And that's a scalloped edge on that one. These kinds of scissors are nice to have so that you can add some more design to your paper edges if you want to. Nice to have, but not necessary. So that's scissors. Then um, the next one that I'm talking about is uh, a ruler. These are all metal rulers. You don't have to have a metal ruler. You can use a plastic ruler but it needs to be fairly um, sturdy and rigid. You can place your paper underneath it and then tear along that edge. It gives you a rough edge, which is apparently um, a valued thing in the junk journal community. We like our torn edges. And um, this is a little six inch ruler, which is very handy for tearing smaller pieces of paper. And this one has this cork backing on it, which is nice to keep it in place. It doesn't slide around as easily, but I've noticed that it doesn't tear as, um, as well as these metal rulers that have more of a sharp edge. This is kind of rounded, so it doesn't tear as easily, and especially the corks. Watch this do just perfectly since I said it doesn't do as well. <laughs> I guess it's better if you go slow across there and don't try to just rip it all the way across. But it's a little bit more uneven edge there. So if that's what you would like to have, then that's fine. I've also had some success turning it over the other way and tearing it that way. But it kind of slid around a little bit on that. Anyway, that's, that's rulers to tear paper with, to draw lines with, if you want to do that. Um, handy things to have. You need some kind of pokey tool. Particularly, you need that when you're 
um, if you're doing like a three hole punch or a five hole punch binding on your journal to poke the holes that you put the thread through. I bought this one in the sewing department and it's kind of fat. And if I would realized that I had this ice pick, which is, is smaller, is thinner than this, I probably wouldn't have bought this. I would have just used the ice pick, but now I have it, so I, I use both of them. And there, there are other kinds of pokey tools. Some of them have longer, thinner needle nose to them that you can use. Or you could use something like a small screwdriver to poke a hole, or a heavy duty needle would work also. So those are the kinds of things that would work for putting holes in your paper. You can also punch holes in your paper to add texture in, in an area or something like that. Just um, being creative with your supplies. Then a hole punch is good to have. This is um, something that I've seen used, like if you're putting a decorative edge on there, you can just punch down the edge. It's kind of tedious to do that. I don't know that I've ever done that. But it's handy also for binding. Say for instance, um, if you wanted to make this into a journal, If you had multiples of this paper, so you're tying them together, what you do is just take a length of yarn long enough to go through it, or ribbon, or whatever you want to tie it with, and you'd send it through all, all the layers, and come out here through all the layers, and then just tie the pages together in the middle, like that. And that's a perfectly acceptable way of putting together a journal. And it generally holds quite well. You can trim your ends off to suit yourself. But then you would have this on the outside. But you did it with the hole to um, create the holes to run the, the thread through. A knife is always good to have. This is just a, a craft. Actually, I forgot it in the hardware department. It was very inexpensive. Just one of those kind that you break off the uh, the edge to get a new blade. That's one option. This is an X-Acto knife that I've had for a very long time, and it's also good to use to cut. With a ruler, you can cut my paper back here. Just cut the paper off like that and have a, a straight edge if you prefer that over a torn edge, which... The variety of having torn edges and straight edges is good. It gives more interest to your to your journal. So that's knives. A pencil with an eraser is good to have. This is a micron pen. Um, it's archival quality and it doesn't bleed. So that's a handy thing to have too. If you if you want to use um, say you want to use some watercolor in your on your paper. And you also want to have a design drawn on there. If you use this kind of ink, it, it won't bleed when you put the watercolor over it. So that is an option too, but not absolutely necessary. I mean, you could just use a ballpoint pen and not put the water over the, <laughs> over the ink. Then if you're making a tag, for instance, I, I started this one yesterday. And this is wallpaper glued to a packaging box with a little bit of ink on it. But if, it, if you don't like the way this edge looks, a sanding sponge is a really good thing to have to um, even that off. I happen to like the way that looks. I'm not actually gonna do this, but you just go at an angle down and just take off that edge on your, um, your card or whatever you're doing. You can also do that with just a nail file. This came in a pack of three at the dollar store, so it's very inexpensive, but it works fine. This has uh, the fine edge and a rougher edge, so you get some different textures. Also, these are also really good, the sanding sponges for taking off the glossy finish. This is packaging, Little Debbie oatmeal cookies. See how glossy that is, and glue doesn't stick to that very well, so you just take the sanding sponge and go over that, and it roughs it up and takes off some of that um, surface so that your glue will stick. So that is a handy thing to have also. Let's talk about adhesive. 
there are a lot of glues. And when you start out, I know I felt like I didn't know what I should have, what kind of glue to get. And people would recommend different things. One of the things that seemed to be recommended a lot is Fabri-Tac. It is an acetone-based glue and it bonds fabrics, lace, glass, leather, wood, trims, paper, and it doesn't say paper there, but it does. And it will bond your paper and your fabric together and it makes a good solid bond. So that's an option. Then there's also, um, this is just a PVA glue, which, you know, in America, we generally just talk about it as white glue or Elmer's glue, call it the brand name, is what I grew up hearing. This dries, it says it's quick drying. It still takes a little bit more time to dry than the Fabri-Tac does. But it's a good, reliable glue, and it says it, um, I think it says it's permanent on here somewhere. It says inspiration starts here. Acid-free, which is good. And then this is a little bottle of glue I picked up at the um, Dollar Tree. It's also just a white glue, but it, it was, it is a good glue. The only problem I've had with it is that the nozzle has gotten clogged up. I really haven't been successful in getting it unclogged, so maybe I need to work on that. And then this is the glue stick that I use just because it's easily available for me. I haven't seen the one that Pam from Paper, the Paper Outpost talks about. Scotch Create glue stick is her favorite. I haven't seen that here. So this is Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength Glue Stick. And I've had good success with it. It's also acid free and photo safe and non-toxic permanent bond. So I'm, I've been happy with this. It is, um, if you go across something that has a hole, like a cutout in it, sometimes it peels off and you have a glob of glue. That's about my only complaint with it. But it has held well for me and is satisfactory. And as I said, there are lots of other kinds of glues on the market. You can try out lots of, you know, try out whatever you want to try out and see how you like it. I was using a Gorilla Glue Stick for a while and I, I didn't really like it, but there was, I think it said you had to put glue on both pieces of paper. And by the time I got both pieces of paper covered in glue, then the first one was half dry and I think I got tired of that. This glue stick recommends putting it on one side I don't, know, I don't see it on, I think it's on the, the other package. But just put it on one side, which is much more convenient for me. This is not a necessary item, but it's a really handy item to have. What it is, is a makeup um, applicator for things like face mask. It's a silicon uh, tip on it. And glue doesn't stick to it. It may dry on there, but it peels right off. Or you can wash it, you know, but it... It's great for spreading glue, and I've, I've been glad to have this. It also has a nice round handle that comes in handy sometimes if you're trying to press something down. But speaking of pressing things down, another nice thing to have is a bone folder. I got this one at Hobby Lobby, and um, it's plastic. They also come actual bone, and what you, do, what you use it for is, um, for instance, when I glue this down, it's really handy to have to just press the, the glue across and spread it out so that you have a better bond in there. It can be used for um, like folding. If you're folding a, a piece of paper, fold it over and use it to make a nice crease on your folds. So that is a handy thing to have. It's not absolutely necessary. You can use the handle of your scissors or like I was talking about the end of this um, brush thing, anything really that's flat, even a credit card works just to spread across and spread glue. Very handy to have. In fact, I would recommend using a credit card. There are other kinds of cards, um, like this one is one that came in junk mail, but it's paper and it, it works okay, but it's not as, it's not really sturdy enough. So this is really a good thickness to have for a card like that to spread your glue. Gift cards, things like that that have, or plastic. Another thing when you're binding your journals and you wanna hold the pages together while you punch the holes in them, is some clips. Now you can just use, um, what works just as well as anything else is a big paper clip. We'll use this page again. Just clip your pages together. And really it's best to clip top and bottom 
There are other kinds of clips. There are binder clips like these. This is probably um, good if you have a number of pages, large number of pages, put a couple of binder clips on. They also come in a smaller size. A more fiddly size <laughs> to hold your papers to keep them from moving around while you're while you're uh, punching the holes. This is a clip that um, I think it belonged to my daddy. He was doing crop measuring for years, and I think this came from his crop measuring days to hold his maps in place. So that's an also a good good clip to hold paper together. And then I bought a set of these clips, and they work well. They're spring loaded. And, but they have this ridge in here, and if you have a, a whole lot of pages, that ridge can tend to put an impression on your paper. So I use them with caution, I guess I would say. But they're handy to have to clip things together in other ways too, so that is clips. Another thing you probably have if you have a home office is a stapler, a big stapler or a little stapler. This one's nice if you're making a little booklet and you want to um, bind it with staples. This one, this is not a booklet, but it, it, the reach is long enough to slide your smaller booklets in, and then you can put the staple in. It's a little fiddly because you have to figure out exactly where that staple's coming out. Some staplers are better than others about having an indication of where the staple exits. Let's see if I know how to open this up. Um, this one comes out way up here and there's not really anything that's indicating that's exactly where it comes out. So this is probably not the optimal stapler, but it works. And then this little stapler is ancient. I'm not even sure that I could get new staples to go in it because it has it has smaller staples. It has these, this size staples. Tim Holtz has one that's called the Tiny Attacher that has, I think the staples in it are even smaller than this, maybe half this wide. But this one works also, and I just happen to have it. So this is another case of using what you have, which I do. I don't, I don't think Swingline sells these staples, staplers anymore. I haven't seen them recently. Other things that are handy to have include spray bottles. If you're doing coffee dyeing, having a little spray bottle makes it real easy to just spritz some coffee water on whatever you're working on to give it a little aged look or a little grunge. Having a large, like, darning type needle, um, these are sharper than what I would recommend, but this kind of larger needle to thread your thread through to sew your binding in. You need that really. It's fiddly to poke your thread through those holes no matter how large they are. So that is a recommendation is to have a needle like that. And as you go along, you'll discover what other things that um, would be handy to have things like a, a paper cutter, for instance, rather than having to use a knife and a ruler. I have this one, which I got in the uh, office supply area. It's adequate. Um, this measuring part of it doesn't work too well for me, but it slices okay and it cuts straight lines, cuts through a few sheets of paper at a time. So I'm glad I have it. I don't need it necessarily, but it's, it's a good thing to have. And there are lots of other kinds. There are the guillotine kind and um, ones that have rulers that swing out that you can measure your paper as, you're, as you are uh, cutting it. I wanted to mention these two other nice to have items. This is a glue eraser is what I call it. I don't remember what the package said. It came from the Dollar Tree also. It works especially well with the Fabri-Tac acetone-based glue or with hot glue also. If you have glue on something you want to remove it, it just, it picks it up on here. And then you can, when it gets kind of grungy like that, you can just take your scissors and trim off the, the globs. Then this is a set of six-piece tweezer set, Hyper Tough. This is a I guess you'd say a hardware item. And I probably would say, I don't need all, all these different ones, but this also was on the clearance aisle and it was, I don't even remember now how much it was, maybe $3, something like that. If you're trying to get something out of a tight pocket, you can use those. 
these types of tweezers are handy when you're gluing things to hold on to something or placing, say, beads or something like that, little gemstones or something. You can glue them, hold them with this and get them in, this, in the spot that you want them to go in. So I was happy to uh, find this set of tweezers to use in my junk journal. Oh, another thing, I, I want to mention this. These are baby wipes. And um, to, they have a little bit like of a lotion or something in it. And it seems like it takes the glue off your fingers really easily. You don't have to have them. They're not very expensive. This is a pack I've had for quite a long time. But you could also just use a washcloth or a paper towel that's wet, damp, and use that, have that handy to, to wipe your fingers on. A pencil sharpener is handy. Any of your art supplies that you might have around, like watercolors or pastels or chalk. If you're adding something on your journal, say on the cover, metal coin, for instance. This is a one franc coin that I had. And say you wanna glue something like that down. It probably will stick better if you glue it with hot glue. I had several glue guns. None of them had a fine tip and I found out that I really preferred having a fine tip on the glue gun to be able to glue things down. On this, it might not make much difference, but if you're gluing something down like a um, little flower or something like that, that's going to stick up and you want to attach it to um, fabric or something else, or one of these, um, this is a top off of a Christmas ornament ball that I, um, I used a bunch of those in a a different kind of project. I don't remember what I was making now. Wreaths, I think. And I took this part off, but I, I discovered the other day, I found them again, and I discovered that if I open these petals out like that, it makes a cute little flower-like thing. And something like this is perfect to use a glue gun to glue it down. So that's another thing that um, is handy to have. You don't have to have it, but if you have one, you might think about bringing it out to use. There are other things like double-sided tape, double-sided um, foam tape that raises things up off your paper and makes them um, have more dimension. But as you go along, if you have scissors and glue and a ruler and a pen and just some of these basic, basic tools, you can get started in making a junk journal. And then as you go along, you'll find other things you think, oh, well, I'd like to have that. And you can add that to your supply, like stamps and ink, like um, these um, Tim Holtz um, Distress Oxide inks. Those are vintage photos, really popular, or walnut stain. I don't have walnut stain, but this is something that, um, used to distress the edge of your page to make it look old or make the whole paper look old. So these are things that you might wanna invest in. I discovered that I could use a felt um, tip like you put on a chair to keep it from scratching your floor. And they're self stick. And so you just take one of them and attach it. I can put it steel. Just attach it to the end of your spool like that. And it makes um, an applicator for your your inks. Thank you for watching, and I hope that this has been helpful in um, giving you some ideas about what things you can use to get started making junk journals. Next time we'll talk about some different kinds of papers and other things that you can use in your journals. We'll see you then. Bye.